सर आपका बिजनेस बहुत ही बढ़िया चल रहा है आप इंटरनेशनल ट्रैवल करते हो हाँ जी गोल्फ खेलते हो नहीं वो तो बिल्कुल नहीं कोई नहीं नेटवर्किंग होती है खेलना चाहिए देखिए हमारे पास एक तो आपको बढ़िया से बढ़िया फॉरेक्स रेट्स मिलेंगे हमारे पास कार्ड्स है हमारे पास फ्री गोल्फ सेशंस है हमारे प्रिविलेज मेंबरशिप में आपको बहुत सारी चीज़ें मिलेंगी को बस एक पाँच करोड़ की रिलेशनशिप वैल्यू रखनी है पाँच करोड़ सो लेडीज जेंटलमैन दिस इज़ हाउ बैंक प्रोग्राम्स प्रिविलेज प्रोग्राम्स ऑपरेट इन रिटर्न फॉर कीपिंग योर मनी विद दैम ऑफ अ सर्टन अमाउंट दे ऑफर यू दीज लिटिल पर्कस एंड दीज लिटिल प्रिविलेज सो वी कॉन टॉक अबाउट दैट टूडे विथ मी इज़ माई कॉलीग अक्षत रोहतकी एंड आई एम नील बोराटे एम डेप्यूटी एडिटर एट मिंट सो अक्षत लेट्स फर्स्ट गो थ्रू द प्रोग्राम सेम सेल्स वॉट आर द टिपिकल फीचर्स दैट यू गेट इन दैम सो द टिपिकल फीचर्स आर यू गेट लॉन्ज एक्सेस यू गेट डोमेस्टिक एज वेल एज इंटरनेशनल द मोस्ट इंटाइसिंग फॉर लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर बाय गेट पेन मूवी टिकट्स सो दे यू कैट get from ranging from 1 a month to 5 6 per month then you have zero forex marker for people who travel abroad then you have golf games golf lessons and you could also get reward points on basis on what card you get from them yeah so all kinds of little freebies thrown in yeah and uh, of course there is the one unsaid factor in all this which is the ego value of you being part of one of these privileged hni programs H and I here stands for high net worth individual. Um, now, what we did in Mint is try and calculate the monetary value of these programs. It is not easy to work out. Um, how do you assign a value to two free free golf sessions, or how do you assign a value to the points that you get on cards? Because those translate into, let's say. um amazon vouchers or those translate into you can hotel vouchers yeah correct correct so it's very difficult but we still attempted we still did our best to put numbers to them um so akshat roughly what kind of values did we get so uh so the kind of uh, benefits as well as what you pay and what you get depends upon the total trv as you said So most programs of private banks have TRVs ranging from three to seven and a half crores. So, for example, we took Access, which has kind of the best in the private banking space. The program. So the the benefits that you get are uh, suppose you get thirty thousand edge points just as you start. You get domestic as well as international lounge access. That's dependent upon uh, how much you travel. Then you get golf lessons, golf. Uh, the games which we haven't incorporated because this most people don't use it and it's difficult to assign a monetary value to it and then you get buy, buy and get and movie tickets then obviously you get a uh, zero forex marker which is a kind of a benefit for people who kind of travel abroad or have a lot of international expenses so that kind of work out to around the benefits work out to around 2.3 2.4 lakhs uh for a year and So and what you are going to pay is kind of yeah. So now let's come to that. Hmm. Um, you know, banks will not normally tell you how much you should actually be paying, um, and you also can't figure out yourself how much you will be paying because this is all taken from you indirectly. So TRV here means total relationship value. This is the amount of money that you should be keeping with the bank, either as an FD or in the savings account or in a mutual fund invested through the bank. or an insurance policy that you bought from the bank or all of them in some combination right now all of these are ways to extract value from you so let's start with the simplest one right a savings account how does a bank take value from you in a savings account so in a savings account uh, if you are kind of uh, suppose you have a trv of 5 crores so if you uh, assign like half to it in an investments and half to it in savings account so you're getting an interest implicit interest of around 3 to 1/2 percent wherever the uh, however the bank lends it at 12 15 17 we don't know what's the rate of interest and if you kind of invest that in fd so there's an implicit cost for a lot of investors or people who are uh, members of those programs do not understand so if you kind of invest uh, in an fd in a private bank uh, even a, above a sum of 2 crores you are still kind of getting a uh, percent or a percent point to well, 100 to 125 basis points less than what you could get in the market yeah 
so that uh, that amounts to roughly if you do an fd supposedly of 2 crores for a 3 year three year period and you lose one person so you kind of losing more than 7 to 8 lakhs over that period yeah yeah so if we take the simplest example of a savings bank account if you keep the entire 5 crores just in your savings account you're getting 3 and a half 4% you could deploy that money in a very low risk liquid fund at 6 7% so straight away you're losing 3% there per year right so if i were to do it on a sum of 5 crores that is 15 lakhs right in a single year single year now if you do an fd instead that gap reduces because maybe you have another bank which is offering 1% more so maybe instead of 15 lakhs it's a 5 lakh opportunity lost but typically the bank will always try to sell you the highest fee earning the highest commission earning product and that will not generally be an fd so let's talk about the two big fee earning products here which is mutual funds and insurance so let's go to mutual funds first how much does a bank earn in mutual funds from you so that depends upon what kind of program program is the banks are offering either if it's some most probably it would be a regular plan so you're going to lose maybe 0.5 0.6% that would be explicit and they'll most probably offer you programs that are uh, mutual fund schemes that have the highest turn the total expense ratio so you're going to implicitly lose there around 200 to 300 basis points as well so that also works out to around 100 or 125 basis points yeah so roughly you can take a rule of thumb in an equity mutual fund you will end up paying 1% commission to the bank every year right that's fairly simple in a debt fund it will be it will be lower but usually the banks will try to sell the highest commission funds to you right and now let's come to the big one which is insurance especially life insurance so how does a bank uh, take value from you in the life insurance policy so most rms would sell you ulips or general insurance life insurance plans and you could end up paying more than 30 to 40% of the premium as commissions to them So IRD, IRDI as uh, sorry PFIDI mentioned that the maximum premium that you could get uh, no that's IRDI IRDI it's around thirty five percent so it could it could be in the range of thirty thirty five percent that could be the amount that uh, the banks RMs could be extracting from you and without your knowledge yeah yeah so all kinds of insurance policies have commissions hidden in them so the broader point we're trying to make here is that um, when somebody comes to you a bank RM comes to you. you know with folded hands and uh, selling you this amazing privilege program there is a big catch to all of this um, instead you should ask that person what real value they are delivering to you right um, and there are other options besides banks there are registered investment advisors who will probably do the same job at a much cheaper price without the frills and fancies of a bank any parting thoughts on this akshar i think uh, as you mentioned Uh, you should always evaluate the fees yourself you should always evaluate what i what are the things that the rms are getting into whether it's mutual funds aifs or it could be pmss wherever they get the highest commissions yeah we didn't even touch upon that actually so aifs alternate investment funds and portfolio management services pms are two products that are strongly marketed towards high net worth individuals uh pms have their own commission structure so it can be something like a 1% management fee and a 10% performance, performance fee. Performance fee. AIF can have something similar. So so again these are methods of value extraction from you as the consumer something to really be careful about. Right. So let's just 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 say, uh, take a small example. So if uh, if you are investing in an AIF or PMS which RM is kind of misselling you or like persuading you to buy Uh, supposedly you lose an amount equivalent to 3% and that 3% compounded over a period of 3 years on a 2 crore portfolio would be more than 22 lakhs and that uh, people don't like kind of take into their minds that yet they are losing implicitly 22 lakhs over a period of 3 years yeah yeah so that is one big issue with uh, products like these so again just to uh, round off the bigger point here when banks come to you with these privileged priority programs there are all kinds of names for these just be very very skeptical be very careful about what kind of value you are actually getting from them